Okay, so, all right, now we're into review questions for our, this, I said 11, lesson 11 before, it should be, I believe, a lesson 13. Um, review questions here, ready? Again, we've covered all this stuff, this is just practice on what we've already learned. And I should mention to you quickly that um, in a little while, tomorrow morning or later tonight, I'm going to make up the test for this particular section of the course. And uh, there'll be an upcoming review sheet after the next lesson, which will have a lot of terminology on it. You're gonna need to pay a lot of attention to that. And you're also gonna have to pay a lot of attention to these review questions, and even a little bit to the practice questions for the quiz upcoming, and also for the test next week, as they will be good sources of information for you. Okay, so simple interest, I equals PRT. In this case, 2000 is what she's borrowed. She's borrowed it at 5% for nine years. I just multiply 2000 times 0.05 times nine, I come up with 900 bucks. So that's the interest. When it says how much interest will she pay? That's it, 900 bucks. Um, what is the total amount she has to repay? Well, she also has to repay the 2000 she borrowed. So the total amount is 2900 or 2900. As far as number seven goes, you know, we can work these formulas in two ways, kind of like we did the Celsius and Fahrenheit when we, we did a lot of examples of that. Similarly here, same with the I equals PRT or any formula. So we start with I equals PRT. I don't want to memorize separate formulas. The interest, it says, is 400 bucks. So 400 is 4,000 times 0 0.05, and that's because 4,000 is the principal and 5% is the interest rate times T. So 400 is 200 T, 4,000 times 0.05 is 200, dividing by 200 each, and the time is two years. So another example of using a formula to solve for something within the formula. Let's go next, compound interest calculation. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, here's our formula we always start with. The big thing we have to be careful about here is how are we compounded? In this case, it says compounded monthly. So N is actually going to equal 12. So I put in 35,000 for the principal P, one plus, and then the APR is 0 0.0275 divided by 12 because there are 12 calcul uh, it's calculated monthly, and then 12 times five. And it makes sense, it's in there about five years. So 35,000 times, there's my conversion factor, to the 60th power is 40,152.74, okay? That kind of makes sense, right? If you put 35,000 in and you leave it for five years and you're earning you know, some money in there, compounded, that you would come out with you know, around 40 grand. So that's a logical amount of money. Next, what's the difference between simple interest and compound interest? List five reasons why you should try to buy a home instead of rent and Compare a 15-year mortgage to a 30-year mortgage. Stop and start. Okay. Simple interest is on principal only. Compound interest, uh, compound is also on the interest. Next, five reasons why you should try to buy a home instead of rent. Forced savings, equity. Well, uh, having a home is like a forced savings account because some of that money is being put back um, into the value of the house. So one day you'll be able to sell the house and recoup at least some of the money it cost you for the house. Equity, that's when um, that money builds itself up. And I should say with four savings, most property values go up. So in a sense, you're gonna get a, a savings from the value of the house going up. And equity is similar to that in the sense that um, at some point in time, you may look to need money from your house, preferably for the purchase of another house, um, and you can pull the money out of the value of the house. That's what you call equity. Um, it's a tax break because you put money into um, your property taxes and your interest mortgage payment on your, on the interest on your mortgage payment, and those things are tax deductible. So it does help you get a little bit of money back in taxes. I wouldn't do it for just that reason, but that is a benefit. Um, it's a hedge against inflation because as your home increases in value, um, if everything's increasing, your home usually goes along with that. Not always, but usually. And it is also usually tax-free when you sell your house. 
Um, it's not a hundred percent true. If you make an enormous amount of money, like millions, then you could have to pay taxes. But for the normal person, you don't have to. And compare a 15-year mortgage to a 30-year mortgage. Well, the big thing there is a 30-year costs less per month. Most calculations seem to be saving four to five hundred a month, but a 15-year mortgage saves hundreds of thousands long term. That's based on um, the fact that a 30-year mortgage has 360 payments a 15-year mortgage has 180 payments so you're going to get 180 payments with no money spent into the mortgage okay go ahead try okay so she doubles every six years because the rule is 72 you divide by the interest rate, which is 12. That means in six, every six years, the money doubles. The little chart here, want to know how much you'll have in 24 years. Here's six, 12, and 18. Doubling every time, 7,500 becomes 15 grand, becomes 30 grand, becomes 60 grand. And in year 24, 60 grand becomes 120 grand. I don't know why it says 90 grand there. Let's be perfectly clear. It's 120 grand. Next up, savings plan formula. Use the savings plan formula to find the balance after one year with an APR of 12% and monthly payments of 500 bucks. And by the way, APR 12%, looking good. Okay. Next up, you, what you're going to get here is you substitute in a 500 here for the payment. And here is your one plus and then You've got your annual percentage rate of 12% divided by the um, 12 monthly payments and then 12 times one year minus the one divided by uh, the, the annual percentage rate, which is 0.12 over 12. When you calculate those numbers in the numerator, you get 0.1268 in the denominator, you get 0.01. So 500 times 0.1268 divided by 0.01 works out to $6,340. Again, I always like to check how reasonable something is. If you put 500 bucks a month away for the year, that is $6,000, right? 500 times 12. And this is a little more than that in interest. So that, that kind of makes sense. But just like the Celsius and Fahrenheit, and just like the simple, uh, simple interest formula, you can also use that very ugly looking savings plan formula to figure out, well, what if I wanted to know how much money I was going to have at the end? How much do I have to put away to get there? Here's another problem to solve. Go ahead. Okay, so what well, we said the amount we want to have at the end of 30 years is $1,250,000. Um, the monthly payments, what we're trying to figure out. And I just start crunching these numbers. Uh, the annual interest rate, 6%. 12 monthly payments, 30 years, minus 1, 0.06 over 12, works out to be 1,250,000 equals the payment times that fraction. That fraction is 1,004.52, dividing, and the monthly payment has to be $1,244.38. So there's one other thing that now qualifies as review, and that is a tax situation. So my question to you is how much tax should you pay if your adjust, adjusted gross income, that means after the deductions, blah, 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 is $74,317 and you are married filing jointly. Go ahead. Okay, so it's really important to understand that for every single person on the planet who, or in the United States of America, who pays taxes, Everybody, I don't care if you're Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, pays 10% on the first 16,700, assuming marrying jointly. Then from the 167 all the way up to the 679, you're going to pay 15%. And then from the 679 to the 137050, you're going to pay 25%. OK, so I have to break this down when I figure out the taxes. It's not just 25 percent of 74,317. 
We talked before about of and percentages and multiplying, so here's some examples. 10% of $16,700 works out to be $1,670. Then 15% of the difference between the 16.7 and the 67.9. That difference is 51.2. So it's 15% times 51.2, and that works out to be 76.80. Then it's going to be 25% of the difference between 74.317 and 67.9. 0.25 times, and that difference um, is 64.17. And I get 1604.25. So for the first row, he owes, or she owes, or whoever owes, 1670. For the second row, they owe 7680. And for the third row, they owe 1604.25. You add up those totals, and the total tax due is $10,954.25. Your employer paid $15,000 to the federal government. What happens when you file your taxes? Well, what's going to happen then is the government has this little record. Now, they don't put your Social Security away in a lockbox. No, because that would be to your advantage. Instead, they put away your income tax into a lockbox of sorts because it's very specific about you. And since you gave them $15,000... And you only should have given them ten thousand nine fifty four twenty five. You get back four thousand forty five dollars and seventy five cents. Sometimes you owe. Sometimes you get back. And I have given up trying to figure out which is which.